Guys, don't waste your money. That is the topic for today's video. And before I go any further, let me just be abundantly clear. This is just my personal opinion, my personal preference. And it really has a lot to do with being more of a weekend warrior as an RV user compared to someone who lives in their RV full time or spends several months out of the year. And I think that will become more clear as we get deeper into the video. All right, so today I'm gonna to share all the details on how I incorporated a portable power station here in my RV. And uh, basically it powers everything 120 volt on board with the exception of the air conditioner so that means i can run the outdoor fridge the microwave all the 120 volt outlets in the rv everything but the ac works off the grid and that goes for whether i'm in motion you know on the road or stopped at a, a rest area and this was actually one of the mods that i showcased briefly in a recent video that i published featuring 36 different mods and upgrades on my rv so definitely check that video out if you haven't already but I wanna make one disclaimer up front here, and that is that I am not an electrician or an engineer. This is not a how-to video officially. I'm just an average RVer, and I'm just showing you how I did this mod. And so do your own research before trying anything that I show you today. So with all that out of the way, let me explain the premise for this mod, and I'll circle back to my opening comment don't waste your money and really what i mean by that is oftentimes i see rvers spend thousands and i mean three four maybe even five thousand dollars or more on lithium systems for their rv and of course that includes things like you know batteries the lithium batteries and an inverter charger all those different pieces of equipment so that they can run the rv off the grid but then here's the deal, all that money that's spent on those components, whether it's three, four, maybe even $5,000, all that money is tied up permanently in the RV. It can only be used when the RV is actually in use. And if you're like me, perhaps you use your RV on the weekends here and there, right? Maybe you do a few longer trips each year. If you're like me in that manner, then you can probably relate to how I struggle with spending that kind of money, you know, upwards of $5,000 or more on equipment that is then permanently tied to your RV. You can't make use of all that equipment when you're not using the, the RV. And you know, I get that there are some who do live full-time in an RV or maybe they travel more frequently. Who knows, right? All sorts of different situations where it's justifiable to spend big bucks on a, a big lithium-based system. But for me personally, being more of a you know weekend warrior type, I've always struggled to spend that kind of money and then have it all permanently tied to the to the RV. And so over the last five RVs I've owned, I've never spent big bucks on real extensive lithium systems with inverter chargers and such because I just couldn't justify the, the cost. And yet at the same time, I have found myself in situations practically where I could definitely relate to the benefits of having a big lithium battery bank and inverter charger and everything, especially for light off-grid camping or you know travel stops along the way. And so I've always been curious if there was a way to incorporate an all-in-one power station like this one here into an RV in a way that's seamless so that it could be used both with the RV and then get additional use outside the RV whenever it's it's needed. Well, then when I bought my most recent RV here, the Imagine XLS, I discovered that Grand Design had done an inverter pre-wiring from the, the factory here in this front storage compartment. And so I got to planning on how I could utilize that inverter pre-wiring to incorporate a portable power station. And basically I came up with some goals, really three main goals. First, I wanted it to be safe. I didn't wanna be in a situation where if I forgot to unplug the power station and then simultaneously connected it to, to shore power, that you know I would be in a, a hairy situation. I didn't want it to fry the RV if I forgot to do that. So that was one goal. I also wanted it to be seamless. I didn't want to have to run extension cords, you know, from the power station to different outlets or different you know locations in the RV. I wanted it to be seamless in terms of switching between the power station and the the shore power. And then last, I wanted a power station that was portable, right? That I could easily pull out of the RV when I'm not using the RV and then you know maneuver it, whether it's into my truck or a car 
and so I wanted something that would be easy to, to cart around. So those were my basic goals for this project, and you can of course see that I picked the Segway Power Cube Power Station, and I'll just give you a few quick reasons why. First, I've always thought that Segway makes some, some really solid products, really good build quality. I've got a few of their scooters, and they always seem to design things really well there. I also like their, their UI, their UX experience, whether it's on the device itself or on the, the phone interface, and I'll show you that later through Bluetooth. But then also, this is a really unique power station in the way that you can add or remove batteries. And instead of having cables and you know umbilical cords that you have to attach the different packs together, you can see here you've got a bottom battery, a middle battery, and then the top inverter portion. And so I can take out this middle battery if I don't need as much capacity, and then it shrinks down and is shorter and lighter and less weight, of course. And so this is really unique. You can expand it and add even more packs here in the middle to give longer capacity, but it's just a really unique design there. This one is a 2000 watt inverter in terms of the output, but really you could do any power station for this mod. I just picked this one and it really does kind of fit like a glove in this little compartment here in the front storage bay. But again, you can pick any brand inverter. I just really like this one and I'll talk more about some of those features later in the video. But next, let me just show you the practical benefits of incorporating a power station like I've done here in my RV. Before I get into the technical details I'll just give you a live demonstration of what you can actually do and so right now my RV is hooked up to shore power this is a 30 amp travel trailer and you can see here it's plugged into the shore power I'm gonna disconnect it right here and then pull the shore power cord and so right now the RV is no longer connected to shore power now check this out we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna turn on the microwave. Remember, we're not connected to shore power. And so we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. And look at that, the microwave is running. This is a pretty heavy draw appliance, right? Let me show you what's going on out here on the actual power station so you can get a better idea. Notice how on the display, there's output watts of, look at that, 1384, 1385. So all that power for the microwave is coming from the, the power station. Again, we're disconnected from shore power, and so everything right now is running off of this power station. I can run everything on the RV except for the air conditioner. And I mean, I think that's pretty neat because at a rest area, you know, I can stop and I can warm up maybe some leftovers in the microwave. Super convenient. I have access to all the outlets, everything 120 volt in the RV with the exception of the air conditioner. Okay, so that's an example of a basic use case scenario, you know, practically what you can do with this particular mod. And again, all that can be done whether you're on the road in motion or stopped at a rest area. There's no noisy generator or anything like that. But let me dive in next and talk about some of the technical details because a lot of this mod has to do with how Grand Design did that inverter pre-wiring. And so what you're looking at here is a diagram of the original wiring with the 120 volt breaker box, the distribution panel down here. You can see it's a real simple, just a 30 amp coach right here, but it has all these breakers and basically it's split in the middle right here. So you've got an upper half and a lower half and they're not connected. And so the way Grand Design did it, as you can see right here, I've got exterior shore power, it's 30 amp, and that's feeding into the lower half of the, the breaker panel, that main shore power. And so when that is on, that's feeding power to this lower half. But then because Grand Design ran this inverter loop, they basically are connecting the lower half of the distribution panel to the upper half. And that's how the upper half with the outlets and the refrigerator and all that are getting power because there's just a loop, uh, a 10 gauge wire basically running between the bottom half and the upper half. And they ran it basically all the way from the distribution box to that front storage area where the, the power station is. So that was a major step of this process that they did for me ahead of time. And that's how it came. So next, let me show you how I modified it. So first thing I wanna point out is I did shift some of the, the breakers around a little bit because you can see on the factory diagram here, they had the air conditioner on the upper half 
and I was not interested in powering that off the inverter, so I shifted that and swapped basically the microwave for the air conditioner. So you're gonna notice that right away. But basically, I kept everything the same in terms of shore power going into the unit. I did add a surge protector too, so you can just ignore that detail really. That is not really related to this particular mod, but I did wanna show that the shore power does go through that surge protector first. But it still goes directly to the distribution panel, the breaker box, and then that inverter main loop, that's a 10 gauge wire, an orange wire, instead of it going looping directly back to the upper half, I basically cut it and added in a transfer switch. And so that transfer switch basically determines whether the upper half of the distribution panel, the breaker box right here, is going to take power from the shore power, the lower half, or take power from the, the power station right there. Now, in order to get to this, the finished mod from the original factory wiring, basically all I had to buy was the transfer switch, of course, the power station, and then a bunch of different 10 gauge wires. Now, I previously recorded all of that several months back when I actually did this mod, and so I'm gonna cut to some of that footage next to walk you through how I did it with the transfer switch specifically and the wiring. So I'll cut to that next, and it's gonna start out with the, the raw inverter loop that was supplied by Grand Design just after I cut it. So I'll cut to that now. So on my unit, this one with the red tape on it, ended up being the the hot leg that's connected on the same side as the shore power whereas this one here with the the black tape on it ended up being the return on the upper half of the breakers there i'm going to walk you through all the different connections before i get this all tidied up and secured so right here we've got our transfer switch open and we basically have two sides we have our generator side on the left and then our shore power side over here on the right. So our generator side is, of course, our power station side. And so these are the inputs down on the bottom here, and then we've got our output there at the top. So you can see we've got two inputs, and we've got one output there. So on the left, this is the generator side. Of course, this is our power station feed. And so through this is the input coming from our power station, our 20 amp, service right there and then on the opposite side on the right over here is our shore power which is in our case the inverter main coming from the lower half of our our panel and so that's 30 amps going in and then at the very top there we've got our output and it's only on this one side and that's basically because the transfer switch is transferring back and forth depending on which has which has power so then that output is actually our inverter return so that goes back to our panel but only the upper half of the panel right there and so basically the transfer switch detects power, whether it's on the shore power side or the generator side, the power station side, and then passes that off to the output appropriately so that it's impossible for you to both, you know, be supplying power from the shore power and the generator, the power station at the same time, because that would cause a big problem, obviously. And so it's a really unique uh, solution right here. On the, the shore power side, it'll sense this input instantly and supply that power, let it pass through instantly. On the generator side, on the power station, it's gonna have a 40 second delay. And again, that's just to make sure that the, the power is stable and uh, you know ready for supplying to the rest of the coach. Okay, so those are the basic technical details for this mod, but let me circle back to my goals. And like I said, safety was a top priority. And that is why that transfer switch is so very important because it ensures, it guarantees essentially that I can't simultaneously feed the power station into the RV while I'm also doing the shore power because that would be a disaster, bad things would happen. Basically that transfer switch is the same piece of hardware that is used when you have an RV with a dedicated generator, you know, whether it's gas or propane, that transfer switch is the same piece of hardware that seamlessly switches between the generator and the shore power to ensure there's no back feeding going on there. So so that's definitely key but then also the wire thickness i went with 10 gauge wire because it is grand design wired it you know for 30 amps i'm only using 20 amps here but i went ahead and made sure everything was 10 gauge and then here's another little detail that i did on the actual plug here this is coming out of the transfer switch feeding from the power station but i actually used a nema 520 
right here plug. And you can see it looks like a regular plug except this one is turned 90 degrees. And that ensures that whether I'm using this power station, you know, or I sell the RV and someone else buys a different power station, they're forced to plug it into an outlet that's a 20 amp outlet. And that is key because if I'm trying to send up to 2000 watts of power, I gotta make sure that it's plugged into something that, that also supports that. And you can see it's nice here on the Segway Power Cube that they have that 20 amp outlet right there. And so that's another safety feature. And then of course, most power stations have their own safety features built in where if you are pulling over the provided 2000 watts, most of them have surge watch as well. But if you're pulling more than it can handle, it's going to shut the inverter. It's gonna shut the power station down itself. So there's a lot of nice safety features that are built into these power stations. And then last big safety feature is I wanted a dedicated receptacle to charge and supply power to the actual power station, you know, in terms of replenishing the, the battery here. And this is really important because if I didn't have a dedicated outlet, then you know someone else might come along and try to charge the power station off of an outlet on the RV that is being fed by the power station. So you'd have a loop of power basically, and that wouldn't be good. So what I did is I put a dedicated 20 amp outlet right behind this panel inside the cabinet on the opposite side of this wall that's basically fed off of the inverter main that runs into that transfer switch. So it's on a completely different half of the, the breaker, the distribution panel, such that I can leave this plugged into the power station all the time so that's always topped off you know when i'm connected to shore power and yet there's no risk of me accidentally feeding you know power from the power station to the outlet that it's being charged by all right well those are all the technical wiring details again guys do your own research before copying anything that you see me do here but i will say that i've been testing this for about six months now and it's worked flawlessly for me actually i was at a campsite one time and we had a, a power outage right after a storm and it was really neat because it switched right over to the the power station seamlessly and you know for me i'm mainly using it to power my outdoor refrigerator that's on the outdoor kitchen over here while i'm in transit but then also if we make stops along the way you know when we're traveling somewhere to use the microwave and everything else inside and so everything's worked flawlessly for me but uh, i want to close out the video by discussing some more of the things that i really like about this segway power cube power station because i really am a big fan of this particular form factor you know i really like the the size of it like i said i mean it just fits perfectly here in this front storage compartment and this is a a fairly small storage compartment for a for an rv and it just fits really nicely in there so i like that a lot i also like the the ui the ux as i mentioned before and i'll just show you real quickly what that looks like on the phone as you connect through bluetooth you see all the pertinent information you know how many watts are going in and out the percentage, you know, time left, all that good stuff. And of course you can remotely turn on AC power, DC power. So I really like the, the way that Segway designs their, their product. It just, it's just really solid and uh, really like that a lot. And like I said, I can use this power station anytime I want during the week. I mean, it's just two cables to disconnect, right? The main power coming out that's going into the actual transfer switch and then the, the charge supply that's charging the the power station that's it i just disconnect those two cables and i can take this out use it in the truck another car maybe i'm doing a day trip somewhere and i need some extra power and so i really like that a lot that all that money is not tied up permanently here in my rv well guys i think that is all the details on how i incorporated a portable power station seamlessly into my rv here but you know as i was doing all this i got to thinking wouldn't it be neat if an rv brand were to incorporate all the pre-wiring the transfer switch and basically give you a plug just like this one here a little pigtail that is designed for you to buy any power station of your choice that has the proper specs you know 2000 plus watts of output on the inverter and then basically you can just plug and play and put it in your rv i think that would be a really neat selling point for an rv manufacturer to do let me know what you think in the comments below just give a lot of flexibility in terms of being able to use 120 volt power off the grid without spinning an arm and a leg and then being able to take that power station and use it during the week when you're not using your your rv now if i left any details out you got any questions definitely drop me a comment below i will include affiliate links to purchase the different components that i showcased here in my video so i appreciate you using those to help support the channel as always thanks for watching